we want to be clear, we're not saying that wind energy is bad. Not at all. But it's important to consider unforeseen consequences, even with things that have so much benefit for society. Along historic Highway 74. It looks like something prehistoric, you know, something in the movies. Along the Oregon Trail. Two, three, four, five, six. Mike and Sherry Eaton used to count their blessings. 21 or 22 windmills. Now they count the wind turbines bordering their 10-acre farm. I pulled in the driveway after they started putting the towers up. There they are. You know, I was just flabbergasted. But the view is not the half of it. What's your health concerns? My health concern is because I have a, a motion disorder that uh, the research that we've been researching uh, has a possibility linked to having problems with that. In other words, I don't, I don't know what it'll do to me, <laughs> to be honest with you, and I don't want to be the guinea pig to find out. Well, Mike was an artillery man in Vietnam, and the blast did damage to his inner ear. He suffers from debilitating vertigo, like he's seasick, and certain noises set it off. Well, that's why this soon-to-be-published book has them so alarmed. Wind Turbine Syndrome, a report on a natural experiment. It's the work of New York physician and ecologist Dr. Nina Pierpont. She began seeing patients in her clinic suffering from a debilitating complex of symptoms that include sleep disturbance, headache, dizziness, vertigo, nausea, even panic episodes associated with sensations of internal pulsation or quivering which arise while awake or asleep. These patients all live near a new wind farm. I'm an expert in disorders of the inner ear. Dr. Owen Black is one of the experts asked to critique the research in the book. He's the director of neurotology research for the Legacy Research and Technology Center in Portland. Judging from the studies done particularly by the uh, Navy on low frequency um, uh, sound pressure levels and given the uh, symptom patterns that are described here, I definitely think it needs to be investigated. What the cause is, I have no idea. Dr. Pierpont's hypothesis says wind turbines produce vibration and low frequency noise. And their moving shadows create visual stimulation known as flicker. All things that can affect the body, especially if you're someone with a pre-existing migraine disorder, motion sensitivity, and inner ear damage, like Mike Eaton. I know how sick he gets. We wanted to talk to the company building the wind farm next to the Eatons about their concerns, but a spokesperson told us there hasn't been any conclusive evidence that turbines cause health problems. We wanted to talk to someone from the wind industry on camera about the research, so we went to this grand opening of another wind farm owned by another company near Arlington. We have definitely heard of these theories, um, and we definitely do think that they are theories, and we have never seen any credible resource cited that substantiates this or or any scientific study that says this actually does happen. This area is very difficult be because very, very few people have expertise uh, in the areas that need to be studied. Dr. Black says proving wind turbine syndrome would require a comprehensive, very expensive study. Meanwhile, the Edens keep an eye on the nearest wind turbines within a half mile of their home. This book says there should be a buffer of at least a mile and a quarter, maybe more, to protect the public. It's sickening. It's like a in the pit of your stomach, you know, your whole life's going to change. And you have no control over it. So far, health concerns have not been part of the permitting process for wind farms in the Northwest. In fact, the state of Oregon touts it has adopted an expedited siting process for wind farms. To learn more about wind turbine syndrome, head to KATU.com. You click the Inside K2 tab and you'll find a hot link. For the On Your Side Investigators, I'm Dan Tilkin.